Hey everyone, this is Jerry with San Pedro Mastery. Now is the time of the year for the San Pedro to flower. San Pedro is usually flower just a couple of times a year for one day only. In this video, I will show you how you can collect pollen, how you can pollinate another flower with the pollen you've collected, and how to store that pollen, short term and long term. The San Pedro flower is a magnificent thing. Huge, white, with a lovely smell. It does not last long. It opens at the beginning of the night and will have wilted by the end of the day. That means that if you want to pollinate your flowers, you don't have much time. You can either collect the pollen at dusk or at dawn. It's better to wait until the flower is fully opened as it makes it easier to collect the pollen. This said, if for some reason you have to do it when it is only half opened, that will also work. The first thing to do is to give each of your plants a number or a name. You can write it with a marker pen on the pot or use plant markers. Later on, when you pollinate a flower with another one, you can write down on a piece of paper that you crossed, for instance, plant number four with plant number seven. The pollen can be found on these oval things called the anthers, which are located at the end of the filaments. To collect pollen, you open an envelope in front of the flower, or you can also use a teacup so that the pollen falls in it instead of on the ground. To shake off the pollen from the anthers, you can use anything from the tip of a butter knife to a teaspoon or your own fingers. Be gentle so that you do not squash the anthers and filaments. Also, make sure your fingers are very dry and not sweaty at all before you touch the anthers. You want the pollen to fall down, not to stick to your fingers. The pollen will fall on the petals underneath. You want to gently accompany the pollen with your fingers until it falls in the envelope or in the cup. Make sure that you wash and dry your knife between each plant so that different pollens do not get mixed. Or if you use your fingers, wash and dry your hand thoroughly between each plant. You notice that I say each plant and not each flower, because all the flowers on the same plants have identical pollen, so it is perfectly fine to mix it all together. Likewise, if you have various cacti, which you know for a fact are clones, which means they are cuttings from the same plant, then you can also mix the pollens, as they are genetically identical to each other. For pollination to work on the San Pedro, or on any other species in the Trichocerus family, the two flowers, the one that gives the pollen and the one that receives it, must be of distinct genetics, which means different plants grown from separate seeds. Once you have collected the pollen, you can use it to pollinate a flower on another plant. For that, you can use a brush, but I much prefer Q-tips, as they are of one use only, and this prevents mixing together pollens from different strains or different species. Just roll the end of the Q-tip in the pollen, then brush it on the stigma, the pollen will stick to it. Generally speaking, be gentle with the flower, just like a bee. The bees are supposed to be excellent pollinators. In many species of plants, the flowers pollinated by bees will give larger fruits than those hand pollinated. I don't know if that applies to cacti as well. This is something I would like to investigate in the future, as obviously, a bigger fruit means more seeds. Sometimes, San Pedro flowers happen to be pollen free. The anthers are there, but when you rub them with your fingers, no pollen falls down. I don't know why that is. If you do know, please share it with us in the comment section below. What you can do in that case is pull off the anthers and try to use them to pollinate a flower. As you can see on the screen, it is quite common for insects to invite themselves at the same time. You will have to escort them out of the envelope. If all you have is anthers, just put a few of them on the stigma and apply mild pressure to it, in the hope that they stick to the flower and won't fall off. It is not easy and you can expect the pollination rate to be worse. You will know the pollination did not work when the flower falls onto the ground. If the flower falls, you will not get a fruit, since the fruit part is nothing but the base of the flower. It is critical to keep a track of which flower has received pollen from which flower. Some seed producers attach a little plastic tab to the base of each flower, with that information written on it. What I do personally is to take photos of all the flowers, 
and then mark on the photos next to each flower which plant gave the pollen. This is where giving your plants names or numbers will come useful. Like this, you will know that the seeds come from a cross between such a plant and such a plant. Pollen loses potency every day, if not every hour. If you want to use it the next day or in a few days, for instance, if you have another flower just about to open, then you can put it inside a closed zip bag with a small bag of silica gel in it, arranging it in a way that the pollen does not touch the silica gel. The silica gel is used to dry the pollen. The pollen has to be super dry if you want it to keep for a few days or more. Now, if you want to keep the pollen for more than just a few days, then you will need to freeze it, after of course drying it with silica gel. It is best not to freeze it in a zip bag. You want a more hermetic seal. I recommend putting the dry pollen in a contact lens case or a micro tube like those used in laboratories. Both have a much more hermetic seal than a zip bag. If you freeze the dry pollen in a contact lens case or a micro tube, you obviously won't have the space to include a silica gel bag in it. And that's fine, you won't need one, as long as the pollen is very dry when you put it in there. You won't need one because there will be very little air inside. Now let me show you how I personally do it. I have made this drying chamber out of a stainless steel salad bowl and a transparent cooking pot lid. In the salad bowl, I put a dehumidifier bag. It's a refill made to be put inside a cheap plastic dehumidifier. The bag comes filled with calcium chloride, which will capture all the water that's in the air, just like silica gel. I then place a steel stand on top of it, which is a cooking pot stand I've slightly modified. On top of this stand, I put a small plate, and on that small plate, I place the pollen in a contact lens case. I leave the case open and close the transparent glass lid. Then about two to three days later, I open the glass lid, I quickly screw back on the caps of the contact lens case, and I label the caps with the name or number of the plants using a marker pen. Then this goes to the freezer. You could just place the contact lens case in the freezer as is, but I personally like to go an extra step to ensure the pollen has the best chances of storing well. I think what I do is overkill, but I will share it with you anyway. I first dry some uncooked rice in the oven at 175 degrees Celsius, which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit for our viewers in the USA. And this for 45 minutes, or until it's bone dry. Then, I place it while it is still warm inside a glass jar, and I tighten the lid. This will prevent the air from rehydrating the rice. Once it's cool, I push the contact lens case inside the jar, I top it with rice, and I screw the top of the jar back on. The rice will isolate the contact lens case from temperature changes when you open and close your freezer. You could also use sand instead of rice, but rice has the extra property to be a desiccant. It works just like silica gel. How long will the pollen stay viable like this? A few months, maybe a year, maybe more, who knows. One thing's for sure, the older it is, the more of it you will have to place on the stigma, as it loses potency over time. Another way you could dry the pollen would be to buy some microtubes, as well as a microtube holder box. You would put silica gel bags inside the box, together with the tubes, with their tops open so that the pollen can dry. Then two days later, you could just close the tubes and stick the whole box in your freezer. Now, another important question is, should you use pollination bags? These are bags that you put over the flowers in order to isolate them so that the bees and insects don't cross-pollinate them. Well, if you are not too bothered about what strain or species of cactus comes up, then don't bother with the bags. The same goes if you only have one kind of trichocereus flowering at the time. And you know for a fact that nobody else where you live has any trichocereus plants. For instance, if you live in Norway and you've taken your San Pedro's outside for the summer, I'm pretty sure the bees won't find another type of trichocereus to pollinate in your neighborhood. On the image, you can see a huge large glass in bags. Other people use pantyhose or tights, although it has to be said it is really, really rare for seed producers to use any kind of pollination bags. 
which means that when you buy seeds, you can never be sure what plant you're getting. You need to put the bags on before the flower opens. Then remove the bags in order to collect the pollen and pollinate the flower. Then put the bags back on immediately after, and you can remove them again when the flower has closed and is starting to wilt. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and tick the little bell. Like this, you will be informed of my future weekly videos. Also, check my other videos, most of which are tutorials showing you how to grow the San Pedro cactus as well as the peyote. See you soon.